Okay, um, just going to quickly go through the Sprint Evo to familiarise you on how easy it is to navigate around um, and show you how to activate some of the functions. Uh, first of all, if I explain what all the bits and pieces do, these two, are, these two here are the temperature ports for, for differential temperature when you're doing your flow and return readings. Uh, set up bypasses, balancing radiators, etc. Um, you've also got the two pressure points on there. On the back, um, you've got, it shows what it is. So in line there is the, that's a negative pressure, that's a positive pressure, and then your middle port there is for your uh, sample for flue gas analysis or doing uh, CO room, room tests. On the side here you've got a USB which is used for connecting to a PC or using with a gas leak detection mode. Um, there's your charger point here and on the back of it you've got your, your, your serial number, uh, clearly shows you when it was calibrated and obviously you've got a magnetic uh, patch there and then on the left hand side of the instrument is your infrared uh, window if you're sending your signal to a, a, an infrared printer. Now to turn the instrument on, you press and hold the on button for a couple of seconds until you see the blue light and then take your finger off. And that's, uh, you, you have to hold it down for a few seconds to stop it turning on in the back of the van as you're going along. Um, then you've got Anton, the telephone numbers and our website. Um, you can also personalise the analyzer with, sorry let me go back, you can personalise the analyzer with your company name and your telephone number which you can uh, set into the analyzer yourself either through the instrument or using the software and it's got the serial number on the screen as well and then after a few seconds um, that will then go back into the main menu on the main menu at the top you've obviously got the time and date and then you've got the calibration due so it also tells you on the instrument as well as on a, on a calibration label it will, it will tell you when the, when the calibration is due so um, on the main menu, the first one is there's a test menu. So to select that, basically you, you use the, the, the soft buttons on the on the side to go up and down to pick what you want. So if we're going to pick a test menu, you then press the middle button to go into that. So our test menu, we've got flue gas analysis, we've got pressure menu, differential temperature, CO room safety, and gas escape detection. So if we start with flue gas analysis. Normally at this stage you'd, get the, you'd be standing outside, so you're, you're purging in, free air, in clean air. You'd put your analyzer um, probe, push that in nice and tight on the, on the middle spigot, and then your temperature adapter, you've got a, a positive and a negative, make sure that's around the right way, simply goes on like that. Um, and then you choose flue gas analysis, making sure your probe's uh, in, in clean air. And then it asks you to confirm that you're in clean air, so we're going to press that now, and now what that's doing is it's going through a stabilising process. Uh, that will change in a few seconds from stabilising to zeroing, and it will find the, the zero point so that you're ready to uh, continue with your fluid gas analysis testing. And that's just your purge symbol on there, which is showing you that it's purging. So that now goes to zeroing, like so, and then it lets you into your fluid gas analysis pages. Now, what you've got there is you've got flue gas one. If there's a number on the top of your screen, that, that means that there's, there's more than one page to do with that particular test that you're in. So, if we've got flue gas one, if I press this button, this is on and off if you hold it down, but it's also um, turns the pages. So, there I've got flue gas two, you'll now see on the screen if I steady that for you. Um, and if I press it again. Okay, uh, we're now in flue gas page three which gives you all your readings on here. Obviously we've got some hashes on there at the moment um, because we're not doing a live test. You've got your oxygen, CO, CO2 ratio, excess air, temperature and efficiency. Um, and then you've got these three buttons on here. This one is for, for print, this one's actually set for printer. Um, obviously if you've got a Bluetooth version, that would be a Bluetooth sign there. The disk is, is a save key, so if I was to save this reading, we simply press save and it says it's what log it is, it's a flu log, and the date and time you say yes. It then freezes that on the screen, so you've got log two up there, and because of the band on the top means it's frozen, so that now I can pull across a printer and I can print out, say you want to do two printouts, so I can do that and it, while, while the readings are, are, are frozen on the screen. If I press escape, it then puts me straight back to live readings, um, and then I'm, I'm ready to do, a, to do a new test. This button, this key here, is changing the efficiency. You've got efficiency net, you've got efficiency gross, and you've got efficiency net HE 
for your high efficiency or condensing boilers. Okay, so that's your, that's your fluid gas, that's how you set up your fluid gas analysis. Um, simply put that in the flue, normally within a, a, about a minute you've got all your readings there. Once they all stabilise out, you save them and then, and then uh, you can print them. Okay, now if I want to go back, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to press escape. A bit like a computer, press escape, gets me back one. Now it's saying to me, replace inspection cap in the flue terminal. Um, that's just a safety function to make sure that, you, um, that you've done exactly that. You replace the inspection cap into your flue. Um, so we press escape because we, let's say we've done that, it gets us back to the test menu. Okay, um, in the pressure menu now, so the first one on there is uh, let by and tightness test. So again, we press the top middle button to go into that, and then you've got, it goes defaults to let by. Now this is where you'd, um, you'd have, you can look at the back of the analyzer, it shows you which your positive pressure is, which is this one. Um, most of the kits come with a, um, what we call a, a, an Anton pressure relief valve, which helps you to, obviously on the, when you open the, the gas meter, uh, it helps you to set your, the desired pressure in there. So we pretend we're on a, on a gas meter. First thing you need to do is put the hose onto the instrument, not, but have the other end in free air. And then what you need to do is you need to, it's got P equals zero. So it's this key here, and it means press to zero. It's a bit like um, getting your U-gauge water line right. So. Press that to zero to atmosphere. Now we can then go and connect that to the meter. When we open the pressure, we'd use that uh, here to, to get 10 millibar. So if we can imagine that we had um, pressure on the top line, get your 10 millibar on the top line there. And once your 10 millibar is stabled out, you then press start to start the timer. And then you'll see the bottom, the duration is starting to move. Okay. Um, now, after uh, a minute for, for let by, you'd press the stop key, so we are pretending we're there now. Press stop, and it would say, has it passed? So what you do is you look at the top line, and that would say 10 millibar. You look at the finished um, pressure, which should hopefully be 10 millibar as well. The difference in, in uh, the third line down is the difference between the, the start and the finish, which will hopefully be zero, and then the duration would be a minute. So you'd say, yes, that's passed, and it takes you straight into stabilisation. So at this stage, you'd, you'd put the gas, exceed the uh, gas pressure to 20 uh, millibar, which would be, again, would be on the top line, and then you start it for your, your temperature stabilisation. So you'd run that for a minute for your temperature stabilisation. Again, we pretend we're at the end of that minute. Press the stop key, and it say, has it stabilised? So you'd say, OK, it's, it's had its minute, so yes, it's, it's stabilised. You then go, it go, automatically goes into tightness now, now, at this stage, what you'd want to do is make sure you've got your 20 millibar still on the top line. Which, um, so you check that on there. If you need to adjust the pressure again, use this and the gas valve to adjust to get your 20 millibar on that top line. And then you press start, just the same way as we have on the, on the previous two. And then you'd run this bit for a two minute period. After two minutes, you press stop. And it say, has it passed? So you'd look at the top and it'd say 20 millibar. The finished would be hopefully 20 millibar, and the difference would be 0 point whatever it might, might be, but hopefully just zero. Um, your duration um, would then read, 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 read the two minutes of the period that you've done it for, and then you are, it's asking you if it's passed. So you say, yes, that's passed. Um, now it allows you to either do an instant print, but that means if you do a print and then you escape, you lose the log. Or if you press the disk key, which is the top middle one, press that, and it's saying pressure log, you say yes to confirm. What that would do is that would freeze it on the screen for you. So you can now disconnect it from the gas meter, pull your printer over, or, or if you're using Sprint Mobile, you can um, zap it across to your tablet um, by pressing this key here, depending on whether you've got it set for print or Bluetooth. Um, and then if I want to get rid of that, I can then press the, uh, the, the delete key here, and that will delete that log. Or if I press escape, it will just leave the log in my memory, in my, in my log memory, which I'll show you uh, in, in, a, in a separate video. Press escape. If I want to get back, press escape again, gets me back to my pressure menu. Now, um, if you just want to do a quick pressure reading uh, prior to maybe doing an installation, um, then you can just go down to pressure, go into pressure, again, before you connect it to the meter or, or the gas valve, you'd need to zero it. Then you put it on, get your pressure source. Again, you can adjust it on using that if you like. And your pressure would read on the top line, and your duration is on the bottom, which is simply press start to start the timer. Stop, stops the timer. 
and then you've got your recognise and rewind key if you like or back to zero and then that, that, that gets your duration back to back to the start point again. So it's a nice simple way, it's just a standard you guys, you just want to do a quick pressure reading. Um, but you have the time function there to assist you. If I press escape and then I go down to differential pressure. Um, this is where you'd have two you'd have a, a pressure port out of each one and this is when you set up um, you know fans etc and you're looking for a differential um, pressure reading out of your instrument and that will give you the difference between the two. Uh, and then you've got working pressure, um, which has a duration on. This also has a print facility, so if you want to prove that you've got the right working pressure or the right operating pressure, which is the next one on the menu structure, you can start that by pressing the timer, which starts the duration. That stops, obviously you need to zero it the same as you did the last one, but now you've got the print facility. So you can print and prove that the, you know, the appliance has got the right pressure uh, or, or it hasn't. Press escape, then you've got operating pressure underneath which is exactly the same depending on whether you're obviously on an HE appliance or not. Um, that's it for the uh, pressure menu. Okay next we're going to look at differential temperature on the test menu. So we go to differential temperature and then we press the middle key to go into there. So we've got flow, return and the difference. So if we get a couple of temperature probes Put them around the right way into the bottom spigots. On the back of it, on the sticker, it shows you what's the flow and the return. So this one's the flow. So obviously if you look at that now, you see flow and return, and the difference is zero because they're both the same. If I warm the flow up, you'll see that it's working out the difference for you. If I quickly save that, by pressing the save key, temperature log, log 4, confirm. Again, like all the other tests, it freezes the screen for you. So now if I want to print that, uh, I can pull the print over, press print, uh, and that's showing me that the flow is 26, the return is 20, and the difference is 6. So um, nice, and, nice easy. Uh, you can use it individual, if you just want to do an individual temperature, um, then if I pull one of those out, if you had any applications like uh, maybe setting up um, thermostatic valves and you only want to do a single temperature, you can still save just a single temperature, print it out. Um, and then when you print it out, you can always um, write any references you want on the, on the little printout docket that you get. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next one on the test menu is CO room safety. So again, I've used my up and down key to go into that. I use my middle key to going to there. The pump starts, obviously um, you have to go for a fresh air purge just like you do on your fluid gas analysis. This we've already done earlier which is why it's not going through the purge but you'd normally have to do that and do that outside. Um, you'd normally use your flue probe and you'd use um, a tripod um, which, we, uh, which we sell which will hold the flue probe two meters high uh, in, in a central location of the room. Um, and then the, the software is written into this. So what you've got to do is you have to pick which appliance you're using. So if we just pick on, on one of these, uh, which is, um, I don't know if you can see that, you've got boiler, cooker, water heater, space heater, room sealed appliance. So if we, if we pick on boiler open flue, and we go into that, what, what you see on the page here is the CO PPM, is the actual reading of CO uh, currently. Then you've got a peak CO, which is the, the highest level of CO that it's seen so far during the test. And then you've got the allowance on this particular appliance is, is, is 10 ppm. And then you have the duration at the bottom. So once this was set up with your flu probe and a tripod, um, then what you do is you start the test, and that would start the duration. Now you'll notice that there's, there's no stop key, there's no print key. Uh, the reason for that is it's got to meet the minimum duration, which on this particular test is 15 minutes. After it's met the minimum duration, you then will be able to look at the details on here and make an informed decision on whether uh, it's a fly and pass and the 15 minutes uh, is, a, is enough or whether you need to uh, let it run for the second uh, duration which basically uh, duplicate the test so it's doubling up the test to 30 minutes and the reason you do that is if obviously you'd exceeded the 10 ppm or got extremely close to it and you wanted to let the test run on. Now, um, obviously I'm not going to wait here 15 minutes until the test finishes um, but what you've got is 
you see how it's, it's obviously zero peak CO, let's say it was at 9 ppm, then you'd be concerned knowing that your allowance is 10, so that's when you'd let it run on for the, for the second duration, the second period. Um, if it was at 2 ppm, for instance, and your peak CO was 2, straight away after, as soon as you were allowed to stop it, you'd stop the test and it would naturally, the analyzer would pass it for you. If the readings were unstable or, 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 or high, let's say, for instance, it exceeded 30 parts per million while you're doing the test, you don't want to wait 15 minutes to find out that you're, you're over 30 ppm. So it's got like a personal alarm built into it and it will alarm to tell you um, that uh, you, you need to turn the analyzer off and, and vacate the building. Okay, so I'm just going to press escape to come out of that. And obviously it does ask me, are you sure you want to quit the test? Because I could be many, many minutes through and you don't want to waste that time. So I'm going to say yes. And then obviously if I was to go um, back in the CO room safety and pick another one, same thing applies, you just go down. Um, if I pick up cooker, obviously the allowance is changing that, so you see that's 30 ppm uh, over the set duration of time. And when you do the printout of it, obviously it titles it to whatever appliance that you've, that you've picked. So nice and easy, analyzer uh, basically does the job, and at the end of it, it tells you whether it's passed or failed. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to look at the um, gas leak detection side of the uh, on a Sprint Evo. I'm going to go to the, the test menu, go down one more, gas escape detection. If I go into there, and I haven't got the um, probe plugged in, it will come up and say leak probe missing, please connect leak probe. So it's very intuitive, almost does the job for you. So we'll put that in there now, press that, press escape. Now this will need to be uh, cleared in, in clean air, just the same as doing a fluid gas analysis or a CO build-up test. So this would be um, uh, zeroed outside, and then you'll see it's got a 30 second countdown. Um, while that's counting down, um, what you've got here is obviously sensor settling, and then you'll see there's like a gauge counter here, low, medium, and high. Um, and in a second, once this is zeroed, I'll be able to show you how that works. What you've got is an audio and visual um, read out on here which tells you when you're when you uh, come to a gas leak so that's going to come in now that's going to zero and it says are you in clean air yes we are now you'll hear the beep and then i've got a lighter here let's see if i put a little bit of gas on on the end of that sensor you've got a light there as well so if you're in a poly lit conditions around the back of appliances under floorboards it's quite handy to help guide you uh, so you can see what you're doing um, and then obviously you just manipulate that into whatever shape you, is convenient and obviously that, I've got that lead tied up now but you can open that lead which will give you a bit more space and then when the leak is activated let's focus that back on the screen and I'll put a little bit of gas on the sensor So I've got a bit mad there, but what you've got now is you've got, it's gone right off the scale. Um, and then that will start to, um, that start to come back down as I, um, as it zeroes back in fresh air. So you'd run up and down the pipe until, so as you get nearer the leak, obviously that would, the pitch would get higher. Um, and as you come away from the leak, it would get lower and so will it on the, on the gazer, obviously. And then to escape, press escape and that gets you back out, out of that test. Just disconnect it. Thank you. Okay, now we're looking at the main menu. So the, the top one is test menu, uh, and that takes you to all your different tests. I'm gonna press escape. The next one down is fuel options. This is for your fluid gas analysis, so you can do LPG, heavy oil, light oil, natural gas, etc., etc. And you just simply use the left and the right hand buttons to scroll up and down, and then pick the desired fuel by pressing the middle key and it sets it into the analyzer. Next one down is units of measurement. So uh, obviously we're going to pressure. We've got, if you can see that, we've got millibar, pascals, kilopascals, PSI. So again, you just go up and down, pick which units pressure you want, press the middle button to confirm and it sets it in. Then you've got temperature, degrees centigrade and Fahrenheit. You've got efficiency. Now this is where you set the efficiency as a default. So if you're doing a, you know, mainly condensing boilers, you're fitting new boilers all the time, then you set that for net HE, uh, for high efficiency, condensing boilers. And it will always default to that. 
when you're in the flue gas analysis screen, you can toggle um, and uh, you can set it from net HE to, to gross or, or, or just to uh, net as you, as you see fit. But this is the default. Next one down, you've got analyzer settings. Uh, so you've got auto timeout. Now that's basically if you don't use the analyzer for so many minutes, it will turn itself off to save your battery life. Um, then you've got backlight. Go into there. You can do. Uh, you can turn it off. I don't think I've ever received one with it off. But you've got off. You've got dim, or you've got bright. Most of the time they're just on bright. Then you've got key click. You'll notice when uh, if I stop talking for a second, you can notice when I press the buttons, I'm getting a key click, um, which is which is confirming that you're pressing the key. Some people find that annoying, so you can turn it off. So if you want to turn that, you can disable that, and uh, so you don't have that noise. Then if you've got an Evo 3, which this one is, then you've got the report option in here. And the report means that you can toggle between printer, you know, infrared printing option, or Bluetooth if you want to use it with Sprint Mobile software. Um, and then underneath that, we've got supervisory settings. Now, supervisory settings can be protected by a password, which means only the supervisor can change anything in here. So you've got set time and date. Um, you've got edit report header, which is... Um, on, where you can put your company name and your telephone number in so it prints out on the reports. Print out due date um, is, is a function that you could, where it prints out on the bottom view of your printout. So uh, in my opinion, that should always be on there. Um, you've got flu CO alarm. If you're in a, in a flu and it goes above 300 parts per million, it will alarm to show you that it's, uh, it's on the high side. Now, obviously, we know some appliances do operate above 300 ppm, um, so you can disable that if you don't want that to, to alarm. Um, and then you've got, uh, that's where you'd actually enter your password. And if you had a password in now, I wouldn't have been able to get into there without putting the password in first. And obviously the password also protects if your analyzer, uh, God forbid, did get stolen, it means that nobody apart from them, you know, us, would be able to change that password. So um, your, your details, your header details would be um, in that instrument until the likes of us uh, to take it out and that's it for your um, for your main menu uh, bar the, the last one which is stored logs go into stored logs and these are all the logs that you've taken for your test you can select a log by number um, well if I just press select a log is the top one there and I select that you've got uh, all your different logs and it just and it defaults to the top one if I go find a log by number and I happen to um, make a, every time I do a log, I happen to write it on a job sheet or in a, in a diary. I could then go log to search and it goes straight to that log. Um, press escape and then I've got delete all logs, which deletes the whole lot. Um, we've had these up to three, four hundred logs, so you're not short of log space. Most people just leave the logs in there until it gets full, fill up. Um, and then they start overriding, uh, it starts overriding, taking the last log out. So there's, there's plenty of log space in there for you. And that, um, that's all of the main menu explained.